the Corn Ferry Tour kicks off their new season in the Caribbean. What an opportunity. These guys have a chance to get their PGA Tour card. I am Navin. Have a go, baby. It's my moment, it's my chance to show what I'm made of. The Corn Ferry Tour does such a good job of identifying the next best in the world. They're telling you the time's up, time's up. I feel pretty down right now. Missing by one, it really kind of kicks you in the teeth. You get burnt up. No one enjoys staying in a hotel for five weeks in a row. It's just a matter of time till maybe he becomes the next Scotty Scheffler. Dreams have been realized shot by shot and putt by putt. A reimagined season on the Corn Ferry Tour began in January as 132 PGA Tour hopefuls stamp their passports in the islands of Exuma. But only 30 will earn coveted tour cards come September. Evolving from years past where 25 cards were decided by a regular season points list with an additional 25 handed out at the Corn Ferry Tour finals, this season will be the most cutthroat to date. 26 events will seal the fate of the 30 who graduate to the game's grandest stage and those who ultimately finish one shot away from their lifelong dream. The opening stretch offers stability to those who can secure an early victory. Wilson Furr, I'm from Jackson, Mississippi. I graduated from Alabama in 2021. This is my first full season on the Corn Ferry Tour. Roll Tide. The last year of pro golf has been a bit of a grind on the mini tours and Mondays. Getting my card this year at Q School was huge for me. Oh, nice class. Super sick. Class job. In golf, you get really good at failing upwards because you do that a lot. It's something I try to tell myself. When you fail and then you can learn from it and you just keep stacking those days on top of each other, you just inevitably move upwards. <laughs> it's so long. My name's Chris Gatteroff. I'm from Little Silver, New Jersey. I went to Rutgers in Oklahoma, and this is my first year on the Corn Ferry Tour. 2022 Collegiate Player of the Year Chris Gatteroff made eight PGA Tour starts last summer, coming close to earning his tour card straight out of college. To not quite get it done and be back here makes me want to work a little harder to get back there. Here's and Cutie from Plano, Texas. Went to the University of Texas, and this is my first year on the Corn Ferry Tour. PGA Tour University phenom Pearson Cootie nearly earned a tour card last year after winning in just his third Corn Ferry start. Now in his first full season on the tour, Pearson is joined by his twin brother Parker, who has conditional status. He needs to play to improve his situation and play the rest of the season. Hopefully it ends up both of us doing it out here together and on the PGA Tour. My name's Pontus Nylm, I'm 25 years old from Gavle, Sweden. I went to Campbell University, go Camels, and this is my second year on the Corn Ferry Tour. After finishing 50th last season, Sweden's Pontus Nyholm returns with renewed focus. Getting my PJ Tour card, that's definitely the main goal. Last year I got a little caught up in the rankings towards the end of the year. I can do a better job of just focusing on my game this year instead of thinking about rankings or points or whatever. My name's Chandler Phillips from Huntsville, Texas. I went to Texas A&M University. Everything that I do in life, I just kind of go with the flow. With limited experience on the Corn Ferry Tour two years ago, Chandler Phillips spent all of last season playing mini tours, entering the first event with humble expectations. <laughs> Everyone starts the year with a clean slate, but that will change each and every week as the Corn Ferry Tour is underway. Now Chandler Phillips, the Aggie. You want to come into the week wanting to win, but I've been perfectly fine with like a top 20. Flying under the radar most of the week, Phillips rose to the occasion on Sunday in the Bahamas, surprising even himself to be in contention with a chance to win. I didn't have any nerves because I had no idea where I was at. There's enough leaderboards, if you want to look at them, you can find out exactly where you are. 
I think the last scoreboard I looked at was like nine. And I was three back or two back. And I knew the back nine had some scoreable holes. Let's just take it one shot at a time. If I get hot, you know, I'll stay in the top five. That's kind of what I was thinking. The Aggie rattled off four birdies over the next six holes, finding himself a few shots away from a lifelong dream. The chance for victory on the Corn Ferry Tour. Get on 18, and I hit my third shot into the green. Again, I had no idea where I was at. I go up there, and they got the huge screen with the scoreboard, and I saw that I had two-stroke lead. I ain't gonna lie, my, my stomach just sunk. The nerves started rolling in. Living up to the moment, Phillips made his par on 18 for a two-stroke victory and a start atop of the Corn Ferry to a points list. Proof that his relaxed approach is the right one. I don't touch a club during November, December, January. I do a bunch of hunting. When I do come back, I'm really excited. The win gives Phillips a sense of security and relieves some early season pressure. A feeling coveted by those fighting to earn starts each week. For those international events, you fly down there, you wait around, you're not guaranteed to get in. It's not the best feeling in the world, but that's also the nature of it. It's, it's hard game. One shot away, man. Wow, I fit that to a T right now. <laughs> see potential superstars before their stars. When you think of Will Zalatoris, you think of Cameron Young, you think of Davis Riley, and you see something early before they've made it. Already well on his way to becoming a household name, some would say Pearson Cootie's path to the PGA Tour is written in the stars as the grandson of the 1971 Masters champion, Charles Cootie. It's really unique and it's special that we have to have our granddad that did so well on the professional level. But all I've thought about is trying to make a name for myself. Following in those footsteps a season ago, Pearson broke through with a victory, but a broken left hand in the last event of the season cost him a PGA Tour card, delaying his destiny. It was really stressful not being able to play much golf until early December uh, and then being kind of thrust into the season. Things just go so fast. But until you actually do bounce back, you always kind of doubt it in the back of your head. After two missed cuts to start the year, Pearson entered the final round of the Panama Championship, five strokes off the lead, with the chance to cement his phenom status. Things just kind of kept going my way, and this final round was awesome. This whole time I was chasing. It was almost like an out-of-body experience. Returning to the competitive form he displayed last year, Cootie matched the low round of the day with a four under 66 and entered a three-man playoff. Once it was time to get into the playoff, like all that kind of anxious feel went away. I had a great tee shot in about 110 to get onto the green. So uh, my caddy and I were trying to land about eight or nine paces short and that's just a perfect full lob wedge for me, about a 105 shot. I had one of the best shots of my career to win, and I just couldn't be happier. His second victory in just 14 Corn Free Tour starts validates the Texas graduate as a future star, bringing him one step closer to carrying on the family legacy. Just gives me a lot of confidence to continue throughout the year. I just continue to play with that mindset and hopefully build upon like a great year. Bahamas obviously was fun. The weather was great. It was nice to get out of the cold here. Yeah, and then Panama and Colombia. Panama was awesome. Panama was probably my favorite spot we went to. <laughs> I took 12 years of Spanish, and I still didn't really understand much, so it was definitely an adjustment. Just the amount, the volume of golf that you play on the Corn Ferry is a lot. Oh. Taking care of your body is pretty dang important. You'll get beat down pretty quick if you don't. So it's nice being home and getting everything feeling good for a big stretch of golf coming up here. To start the year traveling like that, it definitely takes a little bit of a toll, so it's nice to have a nice break. We got a couple weeks until Savannah and Chile after that. 
February called for a five-week break from tournament play, but the pursuit never stopped for conditional members like Alex Scott. Make more cuts, then you can have someone hitting balls with you every time, like Tiger Woods. That's right. Right? Oh, that was terrible. I haven't had any of this touch, so it's like, okay, I want to swing at everything relatively full. I mean, I just chunked it. I've been struggling with my confidence in my game for a while. I missed the cut by one last week. I'm pretty sure I missed the cut this week by one. So, yeah, I mean, I, unfortunately, I don't know when I'm going to be able to play again. So, it sucks. I mean, I missed by one at Q school. So, ah. There are definitely times I don't want to go to the golf course, you know? Man, I'm really struggling today or been struggling for a week. Sometimes, you know, maybe a day away might be a good way to reset the mind to be able to come back out here. You got to learn, son, that this game is not a game of perfection. Yeah. When you go to final stage of Q school, everybody's fighting to try to get into that top 40. If you finish in that top 40, you get the first eight starts of the Corn Ferry Tour, guaranteed. I finished one shot out of exempt at finals. Oh, man, that was an inch away from potential guaranteed starts. He knew what that meant. But when you're a conditional guy like me, you don't have those first eight guaranteed, so you don't know when the chances are going to come. You know, I was able to get to the first four, which is good. I grinded really hard at both events, and missing the cut by one at both, I bogeyed the last hole at Columbia, which was tough. I feel, pretty, I feel pretty down right now. Missing by one, if you include final stage, three events in a row, really sucks. Um, it's, it really kind of kicks you in the teeth. But yeah, I hope to even just get the opportunity to bounce back kind of thing. I mean, now I'm gonna have to go play Mondays likely, which obviously those are not easy to get through. You see guys every year who start at conditional and they might not even play for quite a while. You know, they'll, they'll Monday into an event, the top 25 gets them into the next event. Nothing to lose for a guy like Zalatoris. They'll get a start or two and all of a sudden then they rip off a hot stretch of some top 10s. Look at that run for Cameron Young. They might even do something crazy, get a win and fighting for a tour card. Three weeks ago, no status, Monday qualifying. Riding the wave of confidence and momentum. I want to be out there on the PGA Tour and competing to win events out there. And you know, that's not the reality yet. I've never been someone to just take things lightly and have them come easy to me. I felt like that's just the way that I'm wired. Every four events, they have what's called a reshuffle. Your priority ranking updates. It's just so much better when you have those guaranteed starts. Let's say you get off to a slow start, you know, maybe you struggle with that international travel or whatever. Maybe you only make one cut in the first four. Well, you know, you got four more events to do it. Once that ninth event comes around, they will all be dropped into a similar category as me, but they'll have had those eight events to accrue points. So you head to Savannah next? Yeah, um, I'll be at the Monday. Hopefully we're not, in, for yet. Sure. Hopefully we're not in yet. Hopefully I can get one or two of those events and try to take advantage of those so that once that eighth event drops off, that I'll have enough points to play the rest of the season. I was like 11 spots out, so it was looking pretty dicey, but I knew my chances were better than what the number looked like. I planned on doing the Monday qualifier just in case. But once I moved into the field, uh, yeah, was able to withdraw and feel pretty good about myself. After a five-week hiatus, Scott's opportunity materialized in Savannah. But he remained even par through two rounds, resulting in his fourth consecutive missed cut. When the bad happens, you got to know it's going to go away. And when the good comes, you just want to hold on to it. Golf is a weird one. It rewards the streaky player. You'd much rather be consistent and take the stress away from you, but you just gotta be ready because you don't really know when it's gonna come. With Georgia on the mind, early season Victor Chandler Phillips looked to maintain his momentum. I'm gonna play every week pretty much the same. Just go out there and see what the course can give me. 
Wind was blowing fairly good, and greens were really fast, probably the fastest greens I've ever played on it. Got going there in the middle. The standings leader capitalized in round one with six birdies en route to a three under 69. Then the second day, I had good birdie chances. Didn't really capitalize on them. But a bogey on the 36th hole dropped Phillips one stroke below the cut line, while Wilson Fur rallied to see the weekend. Third round here in Savannah. First round, got off to a tough start, doubled my first hole, and just didn't really go well from there. You know, it was just kind of a struggle all day. Knew we needed to get hot yesterday. Shot five under on the front. Figured why not keep it rolling. Eight under, I'm not gonna complain. That was a great day. And we made the cut. Yeah, it's moving day. These are the most fun days. The crowds, you know, get bigger. The, you know, the stakes get bigger. And it obviously means that you're playing well if you're here. The company that died without a name. We always try to listen to some holiday, you know, before we get going. It gets us, I don't know, it's, a, it's just an anthem of our generation. But I like some Green Day. A shame the company that died with All right. Let's go play some golf. Also amping up for moving day, Jersey boy, Chris Goddard. We've had some windy days here. Yeah, I'm in a good spot and hopefully, uh, you know, make a move this weekend. Beginning the day tied with Fur at five under par, the 2022 Haskins Award winner fired a bogey free two under front. But the Alabama alum was humming a different tune, starting seven over through 10 holes. I think a really big struggle in golf is it's terrible in the moment, but I think afterwards you come out a lot better than you came into it, and it really renews your focus and your belief in what you're doing. Despite falling from contention, resilience would define Ver's week. Just as he bounced back from a three-over opening round, he salvaged his Saturday by birdieing four of his last five holes. Goddard's round lost its harmony with six bogeys on the back nine derailing his hot start. With three events left before the reshuffle, the midnight train departed Georgia. Next stop, Chile. Each week on the Corn Ferry Tour, tournament fields are filled on the basis of priority ranking. The higher a player's standing, the more events he is able to play. And every four weeks, the priority ranking undergoes a reshuffle. For conditional players, opportunities to better their position eventually run dry as Alex Scotts did after another miscut in Chile. For early season champion Chandler Phillips, security atop of the season long standings allowed him the freedom to stay stateside and continue fine tuning his game. You wanna go through the whole bag? Yeah, okay. Sit full shots with everything. I just wanna see like how everything compares. When the hell did I start hitting it so far? Last week. <laughs> when we start playing together, <laughs> I think the first time was like either eight or nine. Yeah, uh, junior turning nine then. years old. It's pretty easy. We get along great. Our games are pretty similar. Like I think we pretty much hit it about the same exact distance. So it's almost like I'm catting for myself out there essentially. So we kind of agreed right after final stage of Q school, which was beginning in November, and I don't know if I saw him up here again until a week before <laughs> we left for Exuma, and I was like, I'm gonna carry the first four, he's gonna be rusty, his game's not gonna be sharp, you know? And he tells me, and he's like, oh yeah, first round back, I shot like 63. What do you know? He goes out there and wins. So <laughs> I was like, gosh. <laughs> it's kind of annoying, because I've been grinding all off season, and he just goes hunting, but that's what he's always done. <laughs> I hate sitting inside. Like, I hate being at the house. You know, November, December, January, that's kind of when I just straight hunting. Meet up with buddies. We go pretty much every week. Golf never even crosses my mind. The mental side of the game is probably what separates you the most at this level. And I feel like just having that month and a half off, just to kind of mentally reset, is just super big for him. 
what I go off of with a seven iron is like 178, 179. That's just, you know, a stock seven and it's going 85. Yeah. I don't work out. I don't know where it's coming from. So <laughs> we're just, we're adjusting on the fly. Phillips noticed the need for such adjustments one week prior as he earned a PGA Tour sponsor exemption in his home state of Texas. Despite making the cut, his distance issues cost him. Oh my God, here we go. Look at him, he said, what? What in the world? You know, you can look down at the club to make sure you had the right number. I mean, dude, that thing went forever. And you're, you're juiced a little too, I think. It was a little rowdy. Rowdy and I was on a roll. Corn Ferry, you miss a little bit. Okay, you got 30 feet or you got an up and down that's like not, not crazy hard. PGA Tour, you miss a little bit. You could, I mean, you would have to make a 30 footer to make par, you know? It's, it's just the steps of moving up. Your margin yeah. of error is just none. That's crazy. I've never hit the ball this far, ever. And his goal this year is to get to the PGA Tour, and we got off to a good start, but like, it's kind of cool to feel like I have a small part in, in helping him do that, so. No, it's 50-50. You want to pay me 50% from now on? <laughs> Lost your mind. <laughs> Phillips remains in prime position seven events into the season, as does Pearson Cootie, while Pontus Nyholm and others look to better their standing with the first reshuffle of the year looming. If it's my week, it's my week. If it's my year, it's my year. I can't predict the future, so it's just kind of like when you're in the present, just take advantage of it and just go from there. The journey continues right here on One Shot Away.